Hey guys, Matt Day here for KEH Camera, and today we're going to be taking a look at using this Siconic light meter. Light meters have been around for a long time, and they're really, really useful tools, especially for film photographers, and we're going to be looking specifically at the Siconic L508, but there are a lot of different models out there and different brands. I would personally recommend sticking to a Siconic just because I've had these for a long time, and I've had all kinds of different styles from the analog ones and the digital styles like what this one is here with the actual LCD display and everything but there's a lot of different ones out there just you know pick up whatever you can me personally I always recommend Siconic but there's a lot of different options out there one difference you're going to be able to see from meter to meter is whether or not it has a spot meter attached a lot of meters out there don't have a spot meter the majority of them that you're going to see especially if you're just looking for you know a really simple light meter you're just going to have this little bulb up here this is uh, what they call a lumosphere and basically this is where you're going to be reading the light from. This is where you're going to put the meter in the light and you're actually going to be able to read as that light is falling onto the subject, or in this case, on the meter. So basically you would put this wherever you want to read for that light. Uh, some of the meters though, including this one, they have a spot meter built in. And that's what these two lenses here on the side do. You basically look through this and you can actually look for a specific part in your scene and read the light that's hitting that. So it's really, really similar to a meter in your SLR or any camera that has a built-in light meter if you're looking through the lens. Um, you know, whenever you're using that kind of meter and you're taking it all in, you can kind of switch it. There's a lot of different, you know, options or modes, I guess, that certain cameras have where it kind of averages all of the light in the entire scene, you know, that's in your viewfinder at that moment. Or you can switch it to spot meter where it's only going to measure the tiny, tiny part of the center of your viewfinder and it's going to read that specific light. Anytime I'm using an in-camera meter, I always use that feature itself because uh, you know, certain cameras and some might be better than others, but a lot of them can be easily tricked by the light in your scene. So if you're shooting something that's very backlit and all the light is behind your subject, when you're looking through your viewfinder, it's reading all of that light coming in. So it's going to be taking in all of the light behind your subject and it's going to say, you know, you need to, you know, speed up your shutter, stop down your aperture, it, you know, lower your ISO, or if you're shooting film, you know, you're going to have to be basically underexposing this or switch the film that you're using. Uh, if you're using a spot meter though and reading a particular area where it's not taking in all of that light, then you're going to be able to get a little bit more critical reading. But the nice thing about a meter like this and something that I always recommend to people, you know, picking one of these up just for that reason is that you can physically actually put your meter in that light and read the light falling into it rather than the light that's reflecting off of the subject that you're shooting. For instance, if you're shooting black and white film and you're shooting, you know, a bride and groom. So the bride is in white, the groom is in all black, you know, typically, not everybody, but you know, the really common traditional thing is the bride is in the white dress and the groom is in the, you know, black tux. So if you're shooting black and white film and you're using a spot meter, for instance, whether it be a meter like this or a meter in your camera, if you're, you know, taking a photo of the bride and it's reading in all of that white surface you know on her dress and all the light on it your light meters are always reading for middle gray so it's going to try and get a gray tone as you're looking through that that's what your meter is trying to do so if you're taking in a white scene like the bride in white or a snowy scene and it's reading in all of that white what it's going to do is try and have you bring that down to get a gray tone because that's what your meter is reading it's reading in middle gray so in order to make that white a gray, you're going to have to darken it. So it's going to have you underexposing your image. And this is something you have to keep in mind if you're using a spot meter because, you know, it's your camera doesn't know any better. You know, you have to understand what your camera is doing or what your meter is doing and basically how to work with that and how to, you know, manipulate that to where it's giving you the results that you want. So if you're shooting something like somebody wearing all black and your camera is reading all that black, Again, it wants it to be middle gray. So what it's going to do is try and get that black tone <clears throat> to be a gray tone. So when it's doing that, it's going to be telling you you need to lighten up that black and make it more of a gray tone. So you're going to be overexposing. So these are just, you know, simple things that at first it seems really complicated and really kind of confusing. But once you just kind of, you know, build it into your mind, it's really, really easy to remember. 
But the one thing that I use more than anything is just reading with this Lumisphere up here, this instant reading. This is actually reading the light falling onto your subject. So rather than trying to read the light that's on the white suit or the black suit and the white dress or whatever it may be, this is actually going to be reading the exposure of the light as it falls onto your subject. No matter what clothes you're wearing or you know what color your scene is, this is what's gonna be reading the light itself, not the light bouncing off of those different colors. So really, really nice to have something like this, especially if you're shooting film and you can't just look at your LCD. Um, I personally shoot a lot of film, that's like 99% of what I shoot, so I'm always using a light meter. Uh, some cameras, I'll use the in-camera meter and switch it to spot, and over time, if you're shooting the same film stock or the same kind of lighting, you kind of start to know your exposures and it just kind of, you know, gets stored in the back of your mind. But uh, one thing I always recommend to people, especially if you're starting out with film, is just get used to using a light meter. Understand how that light is, you know, working with your scene, how it's falling on different subjects and you know, being able to read the appropriate area that you're wanting to read for. But just to get you guys a little bit more familiar with how the meter itself works and all the buttons and everything, because it can be a little bit intimidating if you've never used one, but it's really, really simple. Um, this particular meter has been well used over the years, so there's uh, a lot of the, the titles basically for all these buttons that indicate what they are. A lot of that has been worn off because this thing has been used a lot. Um, but it's, you know, it's really, really simple. Down here you have your power button. So you turn that on and you see all of this stuff on the display here. And uh, it looks a lot, it looks like a lot there if you've never used one, but it's really, really simple. So right over here you have your f-stop and right over here you have your shutter speed. So as I move this dial right here, it's adjusting those accordingly. So every time I slow down my shutter, the aperture is gonna you know, adjust accordingly and vice versa. No matter what you're doing, the two are working together just like they would with any kind of exposure. Um, you also obviously have your ISO setting up here. So once that is locked in, you're only gonna be controlling your shutter speed and aperture or adjusting them, I should say. But you can adjust your ISO. And in fact, there are two different ISO buttons here. So if you're shooting two different film stocks you know, and they have different film speeds, um, it's nice to be able to store two of those so that way, say I'm shooting Ektar 100 and I want to just store that ISO in there, I don't have to constantly be changing it. I can switch back and forth between a 100 speed and a 400 speed or whatever you're shooting. You can actually do that with this, which that's really nice. Um, over here you have this clear button, so if you're taking a reading and kind of averaging things out, and we'll get to that in a minute, you can clear it and it'll just wipe everything out and you'll be back to starting fresh. Um, right here you have your average button, and this is what I was saying whenever you can kind of uh, average things out. If you're using a spot meter or the, the bulb here itself, and that is actually switched by turning this dial here. So right now it's switched to read with the spot meter, and now this is switched to read with the instant metering. So um, <clears throat> if you're shooting, you know, say landscape photography, a lot of things, or a lot of times whenever I was shooting 4x5 film years and years ago, it's been a long time since I've done it, um, but I would take, you know, multiple spot meter readings of the landscape that I was shooting. So I would look through my viewfinder here, or, or you know, my lens, and I would take a reading for the, you know, darkest part of the scene. And I would store that with this button right here. This is the memory. So I would take a reading by pressing this button here on this side. It would give me my reading and I would store it. So I would hit the memory button and now it has it locked in. And then I would take a reading for, you know, a, a much lighter part of the scene, you know, and I would take a reading for that and then I would store it. And it would have both of those in there and when you hit average, it gives you an average from the darkest to lightest. And you know, this is something you can certainly do, you know, on paper or in your head if you just count the stops of, you know, difference from the darkest to the lightest or, you know, whatever the, the range is that there that you're shooting for. Um, but it has an average button built right in, so you can just easily just hit the average button and it's gonna tell you, you know, what your exposures are to get kind of that in-between spot. So it's a really, really, you know, useful feature if you're doing stuff like that. Um, so obviously I have my, you know, my averages here, which I think it was just reading over here the wall, you know, as I was doing that. But um, once it's done, you can hit the clear button and there you go and you're back to, uh, you know, back to where you started. So it's a really, really nice feature for that reason itself. Um, there are different modes here as you're actually using this. Uh, so if you're using the, uh, the bulb here, the, uh, the incident reading, you can actually, uh, you know, basically make it to where it's more flush with the front of this to where the bulb isn't out. Um, but if you want to actually put the bulb out, all you have to do is twist it here. And there's a couple different, you know, reasons for this. As you can see, you know, with a sphere, it's reading the light all around. So it's reading some of the light over here from the soft box that I have over here to my left. 
but and then it's also reading some of the light over here, just the light that's bouncing off, whatever it may be. So if you uh, rotate this and actually put the bulb in, it's not catching all of that light. It's just the light that's hitting it directly. Um, this is something I personally use with color negative film because uh, with color negative film, you typically want to err on the side of uh, overexposure because your highlights can retain a lot more detail than your shadows can if your shadows get underexposed. So basically if you you can overexpose and still have good highlights but if you underexpose your shadows are going to start to go pretty quickly that's why you want to err on the side of overexposure and uh, so what I typically do is I expose for the shadows because if I expose for the darkest part of that scene I know that no matter how bright it is I'm still gonna have good highlights there so basically I just put the bulb in and I just meter for where the shadows are so say you know if I was doing this right here and I was taking a photo in color negative film all of the light is right here but I want to meter for the shadows so I would put this right here because this is gonna be reading more of the shadow side of my face rather than the light you know, you're gonna get two different readings for that. In fact, we'll go ahead and do that just for uh, demonstration. So I'll set it to ISO 1600. I shoot a lot of uh, Ilford HP5 at 1600, so that's usually what my meter is set at. But um, we'll go ahead and take a reading right here, and it's giving me a reading of F4 at 1 25th of a second. 1 1 25th of a second. Now if I take a reading over here for the darker side, it's giving me a reading of F1 at 1 1 25th of a second. So, F1 to F4, there's a difference there, and that's why you uh, you know you do that kind of thing. Now, if I were to put the bulb out just like this uh, towards the camera, and it's reading it, it's going to give me a reading of F1. Now, if I turn it just a little bit, it's going to give me a reading of oh, I'm hitting the memory button. If I hit the story button here for the the read button, it's giving me a reading of F4 right here at one one twenty-fifth of a second. Now, if I turn it a little bit, it's at two point eight. But if I put the bulb in now it's reading at f1 so just that tiny you know difference there with the bulb where it's catching these highlights over here that's why i retract the bulb in to make sure i'm reading just the shadows because you know a sphere there's a lot of different sides there obviously you know that's everywhere it's 360 degrees whereas in this case it's you know 180 because it's only half that's sticking out but you get the idea you know it's going to be picking up the highlights there so that's one thing that you can do just to basically kind of prevent that but it does have different metering modes like i mentioned before so i'm in the instant metering meaning i'm metering with the bulb here and I can switch that to a few different modes so if you hold the mode button in and actually turn this dial you can see there are two different flash icons there's one flash icon by itself and then there's another flash icon with a C and that stands for cord or cable uh, right here there's a little PC sync port so if you're shooting with a flash you can actually have a cable running directly from the uh, you know your, your radio trigger like a pocket wizard or anything like that and have it connected to this or you can actually have it running directly to the flash itself. And every time you would hit this, you know, to take a reading, it would fire that flash. So that way, if you're on set using a flash, you can set it right here, hit the button, and it's gonna fire that flash. So that way you can get a reading for your flash. Um, but if you don't have a cable like that, no big deal. All you have to do is just switch it to the flash without the C, uh, just the flash logo itself. And then when you take a reading, it's basically gonna be flashing right here, the, the little LCD display. It'll be flashing, letting you know it's ready to you know take that reading so as it's flashing you just you know pop a flash off and uh, it'll take all the reading there and it'll give you your exposure that you need so uh, really really simple if you're using flash uh, it does come in handy a lot especially if you're using multiple flashes and you're trying to kind of balance things out but just to switch it back you just hold in the mode button and switch it back to uh, your regular incident metering uh, for your ambient light. And this can be, you know, daylight outside or daylight coming in through a window or just a artificial light source like this. You know, it doesn't matter. It's just reading constant light as soon as you hit this read button right here. So, um, you know, really, really simple stuff. That's pretty much it on this meter. This is just how I use it. Um, there are a lot of different, you know, kinds of meters out there, like I mentioned earlier, for different purposes. Um, but I wanted to share with you guys just how I use this meter and you know um, basically how beneficial it is especially if you're using film because you can't just look at the LCD screen so if you guys are shooting film or digital regardless if you've never used a light meter at least just try it out um, it really does help you one thing I did years ago was I basically just carried my light meter everywhere and no matter where I was I would just kind of take different readings of you know the light in different spaces whether it be uh, artificial light, natural light, uh, how strong the light was, as like how the light was falling. I just tried to, 
you know, visualize those scenes in my head and, you know, remember, you know, what my reading was at that point. And that helped me just understand just the value of light, you know, and how strong certain lights are and how it, you know, affects your exposure. So definitely look into picking up a light meter if you guys are interested in one of these. Um, plenty of these available on KEH, so definitely check that out. And I'll put a link in the description for the blog post to go with this video so you can check that out as well. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions at all, just leave those below in the comments and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.